Well guys, let me tell you, I never in a million years expected to be filming this video right now. I literally just got home and I have to film it. Story time about how I got robbed and my iPhone was stolen. <laughs> It. Yes. Okay, but really, yes, that happened. And apparently I also filmed this entire video out of focus because that would happen to me today. <laughs> what am I, Emma Chamberlain? And honestly, I just got home and I'm still a little bit shook, but the main reason I wanted to come on and make this video right away was uh, two reasons. A, let's make that money back in AdSense, am I right? Like, God, it's the least I deserve after that just happened. Like get some views on this video. <laughs> no, but okay, the main reason, number two, is that I actually wanna tell you what just happened so that you cannot make the same mistakes that I did. And I even thought that I was doing everything right. No, didn't. Hindsight's always 2020, and guess what? My vision's terrible. Mm. I'm gonna make it quick because honestly, reliving this is painful. Like, it just happened and I'm already like ripping my own hair out. So we're gonna make it fast, okay? As you guys know, I bought this phone, the iPhone XS Max recently, okay? The only reason I freaking afforded to buy this phone is because I was gonna sell my iPhone 10. It was in perfect condition, I had taken care of it. I was even gonna give them a charger and headphones and a dongle. In fact, I still have the box. Where did I put it? It's downstairs. I still have the box that had the charger and the headphones and the dongle. So, ha, huh, the guy only took the phone. Joke's on you, I still have the charger. Mm gonna sell that. No, I'm not, but at least I have an extra charger, okay? So I sold it on OfferUp. Basically, I had put out an ad on Craigslist, OfferUp, eBay, all these things. I was gonna sell my phone for $750 because felt like it was worth it. It was really good. No one was really answering, so I lowered it to $700 and a bunch of people answered actually and a couple people wanted to buy it, but it's honestly still, still painful to tell. It just kind of dragged out and then finally this one guy was like, yes, I need it today, I'm desperate, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, nothing about the conversation was sketchy. Like the guy was totally normal. I didn't give any personal information out. I was so wrapped up in like the guy paying cash, not Venmo and making sure we met in a good location. Okay, so let me just tell you, I had been talking to my ex-boyfriend cause he has sold a ton of stuff on OfferUp. Thanks Rob, love ya. He helped me like, you know, just make sure that this wasn't sketchy. He like told me, you know, meet in a, public place, blah, blah, blah. So we decided to meet in front of a freaking police station. In front of a police station, all right? Okay, <laughs> who has the audacity to rob you in front of a police station? We'd been messaging, the messages were like totally normal. We decided to meet at a police station. I told him what I was wearing. I, he told me what he was wearing. I was gonna case him out first and be like, mm hmm, is he sketchy? I forgot to mention quite possibly one of the most important parts of the story, which was that, first of all, I obviously went through like everything that could have possibly gone wrong in my head, okay? Like I literally stood there in my kitchen being like, Adrian, if something happened, what are you gonna like tell yourself you're stupid for not doing after the fact? You know when like something goes wrong and you're like, man, if only I did this. Okay, I went through all those scenarios. The most important part that happened is that in the car on the way there, I had like a literal vision that this was gonna happen. I was like, I'm gonna get robbed. I'm gonna get, this is gonna, I was like, I have done everything possible and I'm gonna get robbed. I have this vision, you guys, okay? And then it's like, at what point do you actually like turn the car around and go home? Or was I just being crazy? You know, like honestly, typically I'm very much like, go with your gut, go with your gut. If you have a weird feeling about something, don't do it. And this time I was like, no, I'm just being irrational. It's just already sketchy because I'm like selling something online. So I'm just thinking it's sketchy automatically, but no, like I literally had a vision of this happening. Also, what does that mean about me? Am I like a crazy psychic? I don't know. Like in the car, I was literally like, should I turn around? And then I was like, no, I need the money. And also like, I'm psycho. Like <laughs> I can't have a vision. I get there, I get out, he said, okay, coming out now. He like comes out of this apartment complex because basically there's the police station street apartment complex. So I was like on the street, he was at the apartment complex. He comes out, I show him the box, whatever. He like doesn't show me any cash. So I, that was okay. Mistake number one, actually, Mistake number one, before you even meet up with someone, ask them for some sort of identifying information, like copy of a driver's license, anything that's just like, I have this person's identity. I know that you can never fully know if it's real or if they're sending you a fake one, but at least you could maybe have something. Secondly, carry pepper spray. I'll tell you why in a second. What ended up happening is he came out, I was showing him the phone. I let him touch the phone. Cause like, was he really gonna buy it if he didn't touch it? He was being so normal. It was like a 17 year old scrawny little boy with a man bun so honestly if you see him give him a little run for his money <laughs> or his not money because he just no he has money he just sold my iphone on the black market for probably ten thousand dollars <sighs> And then he gave it back to me. It was like on top of the box. I'm holding it like this and I'm looking at him like talking to him. He literally, I kid you not, just reaches down and grabs the phone and just 
runs away, okay? Now let me tell you, I went after him because I thought about this. I thought through this in my head before this even happened. I said, if this kid tries to run, I'm freaking running after him and beating him to the ground. So I started running after him. And then he kind of ouijied his way or squeegeed his way, whatever the word is, into this like kind of opening gap in a fence. To clarify, this was not a fence, it was a cement wall. And like, it was one of those ones that was kind of like boop, 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 like you have to go eh, 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 to get through it. Does that make any sense? When he did that, I had this moment of like, Adrian, you don't know what's waiting for you on the other side. You don't want to be stabbed. You don't want to be shot. You don't want to be punched. You don't want to be raped, kidnapped, murdered. I don't know. You don't want to be any of those things. Am I going to get demonetized now that I just said all those words? <laughs> so I stopped running and honestly, I just go, are you kidding me? Like that was my only reaction was just to say, are you kidding me? <sighs> and I just immediately called the police. Even though I was like right across the station, I called and I was simultaneously walking to the station. I told the police what happened. They said they'd send an officer out. And then I called Rox. I was like, ah, what do I do? Eventually the police came I gave them a description I even like retrace his steps to see where could he have gone and I like was gonna go to the leasing office and give them a description too I messaged the guy back being this is what I said right after he stole it I messaged him I go I hope you know I have a tracker on that phone I'm not an idiot the police are coming after you right now good luck and then I said with the cops now they're tracking the serial number I'll give you one last chance to save yourself from being arrested turn it into the police station or they're going to find you no responses from this mofo classic what a literal uh, i was being so nice i'm like i'm here i drove all that way to him basically it was like slow motion it was like out of a freaking movie the guy's like and i'm like wait you're kidding me that's like what felt like happened so i'm gonna tell you the lessons i learned okay number one just don't sell anything online just don't do it just don't. Don't give any personal identifying information. That's obvious. But looking back, I just, I wish my name wasn't even there. Cause what if he finds me on social media and wants to like stalk and kill me? I don't know. Number two, ask for something legitimate. Ask for a copy of his driver's license. Ask for something so that you can identify the person if anything goes wrong. Cause these offer up accounts, you don't know if it's fake. Number three, meet in a very safe location. I'm not even talking public place. I'm talking like in a police station. When the police came and met up with me, they actually said, oh, you should have just done this transaction in the police station. I didn't know I could do that, but now you know. So only do it in a police station, seriously. If someone has the audacity to try to rob you inside a police station, they have mental problems. Okay, number four, I think, I don't know, I lost track. Don't ever let the person like touch the item before they've shown you money. Like say, do you have money? Make sure they take it out and then literally don't even let them touch it. Don't, just don't do it. Or it, only do it if you're literally in a police station. Like don't let them touch it, no. Don't ever follow someone anywhere if they're like, oh, let me go. I need to go show my mom because also this kid said that he's like oh i'm gonna show my mom in a second and i was like well can she come out here don't ever follow anyone anywhere and don't let them touch it that's all i can say i cannot believe that happened i literally it was like this is comical i wish you could see it also take a video put your phone have a video recording right here and put it in your pants like imagine there's a pocket put it right there in your jeans so that it's just filming the whole thing so that at least you can catch the person's face oh also, number five or six, I don't remember, buy pepper spray and buy the kind that dyes your face green because the cops told me that there's a type of mace where it dyes your face green and it leaves the residue on for like a week so that in their words, everyone will know they're a sick bastard. But really, like you could mace them in the face and they'll be like, ah, and then you take it and run. Ooh, I wish more than anything in the whole entire world I would have maced this kid in the face. And I said, would I have gotten in trouble for doing that? And the police said, no, you were scared, right? And I said, mm-hmm. Those are my lessons, you guys. Seriously, just be really careful. I can't believe this happened. Honestly, this also happened on a day when I went to the bank and realized I have no money, so that was really fun. And I just, all I can say is like, this is so incredibly shitty, but like, it could have been worse. I could have been hurt. I could have been affected by these California fires. I could have been a part of the shooting. Like, I am so grateful to be alive, to be healthy, to be well. All that happened is a device got stolen. I lost $700. That's really crappy, but there are worse things in the world. So I'm just trying to not even let myself get too annoyed or pissed or sad. Like I really just have to let go, which luckily I'm pretty good at doing that. I'm pretty good at just realizing what is okay in the world, what I'm grateful for. I did everything I could do. I called Verizon to see if my insurance would cover any of it. I called Apple to see if they could lock the phone to make sure that the next person couldn't try to sell it. Another maybe suggestion if you're trying to sell a phone, don't reset it until they like agree to buy it and then sit and reset it there. 
but make sure they don't take it because then they would have all your information too. But the reason I say that is because find my iPhone is still on the phone. So like, oh man, I guess maybe, I don't know, don't do that though, because then if they do take it, well at least if it is your information and then they steal it, you can lock it. Like the, if you call Apple, they can lock it so that that person cannot access any of your information and they can't use it, they can't activate the phone. So that is the lesson that I learned. Today was not the best day. I'm also just like, you know, in a stressed time, but I'm gonna look back at this and I'm gonna laugh because I'm gonna be a millionaire and this kid probably has a sad, sad life. And I would like to think that maybe he was doing it because he needed to and his mom was sick or he was desperate which I don't forgive but all I can think is that this guy's life is really sad and karma is gonna come bite him in the booty and hopefully I get a really fat check tomorrow from something really random and unexpected that would be great gonna try to manifest that tonight so that's my story of how my iPhone just got stolen that was really oof oof thank you so much for watching I hope this video has a million views so I get paid some money in replace of the iPhone I just got robbed from me all right you guys i will go now but just don't make the same mistakes i did just don't sell things online don't do it honestly screw that i love you subscribe i'll see you in some more happy cheerful positive good videos okay bye